Let's see. Ah. What do you think? It's you can okay. be okay. Yep, I'll manage. Good. Make a nice new place. It's very tempting to roll it down, shall we try? Yes, let's try and roll it Drop down. Drop it over here. Over here? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Into the big pond. Today we start working on our new pig enclosure in one of our favorite spots. This week was so unpredictable, raining one minute, sunny the next. Don't get me wrong, we love the rain and we really need it. But it does make working outside pretty challenging and this week we really need to start working on this new pig enclosure. Because we had more piggy problems, so work on the outdoor kitchen is taking a pause yet again. Looking good! I'm so happy to see this up there. Now the this replacement mother beam um, is a bit thinner than the original. It's not as thick. So I had to get into contact with Dirk just to make sure everything's okay because I mean this is going to have so much soil and when it rains as being a green roof it's going to be super super heavy so I have to make sure that um, it's all safe and strong enough for the job. So I did speak to Dirk and he's straight away come back with uh, he arranged the design a bit. Hey look, hopefully all good. Finally got the plan changed for the gazebo with uh, the new beam construction. Before there was only one beam that was uh, on the center of the, this beam between those columns. So the, let's say some conference or the ring, ring balcon around. So now I got two, like we already talked about it earlier. So the reason for this is because the mother beam is not that heavy anymore. It has to take the load, especially for from these two. But then I thought it would be good because then the wood on top, so of the roof itself, the planks, don't have to be that thick if you get the beams more frequently. So this week we're going to give this a bit of a rest just because we need to sort out a new enclosure for the piggies. We've spoken about this in a previous episode and so we'll touch on it later in this one. Um, but yeah, we need to get on to that before it's their time of the month again, because that's when the trouble happens. So Peppa and Maggie now have different sleeping arrangements because we found out it works better this way and that way they tolerate each other more during the day. So the first thing I did was go down to the goat house after I, had, I hadn't been there for such a long time and I cleaned it out. I wanted to do it anyway because we will be moving the chickens there at some point. But Peppa needed more than the chickens do. Oh, I haven't been here in a long time. <sighs> Anybody home? Oof. Wow, I really should have left it open. Well, you're coming. We're going to do some gardening. Go on. Oh, 
You know what? I need my gloves. Bring me my gloves. Bring. <laughs> clever girl. Clever girl. Bully, bully. I have two. Bring me the other glove. Bring. Clever girl. Bring. Thank you. Wow, you clever, clever girl. You clever girl. Let's go. <laughs> You don't like the rain? What are you telling me? Come, come Maggie. You want this? You want to try it? Yummy. You want to bite this? <laughs> bite this one Maggie. Bite it. Well, I wouldn't say it was her favorite. She had a couple of bites and went back underneath the cork tree to find some acorns. Here you go, Molly. The sound that I'm moving is wild mint. It grows everywhere. I have the mint we like growing there and this is growing, spreading to meet it. Say, hey, Molly, Molly, come. Let's go shopping. raining again but look that's coming this way so it could be nice again soon now we're just waiting for Luke to come back with a car full of goodies Maggie chase you to oh, I don't know. Okay. Found them. Hi. Papa and Maggie are really spending a lot of time apart. They just stay together a little bit in the morning and then they just go their own separate ways all day and then they sleep by themselves. Keeping them inside the enclosure, they were breaking it really often and right now we don't have too many problems. Very good. This is where Peppa got out of. Oh my goodness, I tell you, it's, it's getting impossible to keep them in. Where did you go this morning? Huh? Maggie, Peppa's here. Are you going to be a good girl? Maggie, don't chase her. You bring a naughty girl. What has Maggie been doing to you? Hey? What has Maggie been doing? <sighs> We did have a little incident with Maggie a few days ago. She disappeared all night and came back in the morning. 
that was worrying but it hasn't happened again so I think it's just that time of the month they need a man so we've got to get that sorted so they can move in and we can get them you know what they need but this works well for now Peppa goes to sleep in the goat house and she's more than happy. When she knows it's time for bed, she runs to the goat house. She knows she sleeps there and Maggie's fine sleeping by herself. She doesn't want Peppa there anyway. Sleeping together was not nice for Peppa because more often than not, Maggie would kick her out and she spends all night outside. But now because it's raining, we didn't want to take the risk and Peppa loves the arrangement. Let's see this naughty girl. You want to go and see Peppa? Come. Let's go and find her. She even walks like a big bully. Good morning, Peppa. Good oh, you're still waking up, Peppa. Okay, come, come, okay. Come. Let's see what Maggie's gonna be like. Maggie, be good. Peppa's coming. Maggie is a little bully, you know, when Peppa comes close and she doesn't want her, she chases her off the land or away from her anyway. I don't know why they don't get on anymore that well. Maggie, look, Peppa's here. Peppa, you want to try it? No? You want this? Maggie, be nice. Kisses, good girl. No, Maggie, Maggie. Good girl, good girl, Maggie. Good girl, stop, stop, stop. Good girl, stop, be nice. What are you waiting for, Daddy? It's coming soon, eh? Good girl, Maggie, Maggie, good girl, Maggie, good girl, Maggie, Maggie, good girl, Maggie. Good girl, Maggie, Maggie, good girl, Maggie. Good girl, Maggie, Maggie, good girl, Maggie. <laughs> oh, no, Maggie, oh my goodness. Oh. I'll give you a quick tick check too. Let's see if you have any ticks. Just clean your ear. Wow. Love a girl. I know you're good. Good girl. Let's see, open your legs. Do a scratch here. What's this? You're okay. It's okay. Yeah. When Luke watches this footage, he's going to be jealous because he loves massaging. <laughs> he loves the massages and he feels left out when the, the animals get it and he doesn't. Hey. <laughs> he had a lovely big ear, good. Okay, you're ready, Maggie. Did you enjoy that massage? Oh, did you enjoy it? <laughs> oh my goodness. You like this underneath the chinny chin chin? Mm -hmm. You do, eh? Because you're such a sweet girl. But then to, to Peppa, you're a naughty girl, eh? What's wrong with you and Peppa? Why all of a sudden don't you like her? She's such a sweet girl. Nice work, come <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I just bought another batch of fence posts and some rebar. Some at two meters and some at 1.2. I'll tell you in a second how we're going to build this fence because I don't want another wooden fence and I want this one to last at least my lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Go clean your face, he said, because you have a dirty face.
Okay, so this is how we're going to do this fence. I wasn't too sure, but thankfully our friend from Project Portugal, St. Nick, gave me a lot of advice. He came around and suggested a way how to do it. So basically the, the pond, there's a lot of granite, so you can't just pound in fence posts, you know, you're going to have to do something else. So Nick did let me borrow this awesome piece of kit, which is a bangy posty thingy majig but much better than the ones you can buy. It's got this huge T-bar on it, which really adds a lot of weight, so you don't have to bang as hard. And it is exactly 1.2 meters long, so you don't have to stay measuring to see if you're in too deep or not deep enough, which is awesome. So thanks, Nick. And so the way he said I should do it is to drill a, a hole into the granite where the granite is. We do have some uh, the two meter poles are for where we can just bang it into the ground with this beauty um, but there's a lot that have to go into granite so what we're doing is we're drilling in a hole of about 30 to 40 centimeters and then epoxying in or butcha chemica which is like a chemical anchor and um, that into there and then spot welding this to the actual fence post. Now there will be a bit of give from the top but since they're pigs, Saint Nick assures me, that um, they hit from the bottom so it needs to be strong from the bottom. And then we're going to use the malia sol which we took down there which is pretty much the steel that goes into ceilings, um, the, the mesh, but it's nice and solid and then you just tie it with wire to the fence post. Now I don't think I would be able to do this if we didn't have this beauty. So the guys at Bluetti very generously sent us over this about a month, a month and a half ago and we've been using it non-stop. It really is great if you've got a big piece of land and no power or maybe just power where you live. This has saved us so much hassle and money because we used to use a big generator and have to lug it down wherever we're working. And now we've just got this. And I'm telling you, this really packs a punch. It's only seven, 16 kilos. And if you put on the power lifting mode, it lets you um, take 2,600 watts. That is huge. I mean, I've been, I welded, I spot welded this with it, made for kettles and hair dryers, stuff that have that element and really suck a lot of power. It's, 1152 watt hours it takes you can charge it three ways through the solar charging in your car through the cigarette lighter dc and solar 500 watts and ac charging normal 220 charging so with ac it charges a really fast 1440 watts that means it goes from zero to 80 to 80 percent in about 45 minutes that is compared to anything on the market or its competitors it is way way faster and it's just super handy like i said 16 kilos i'm just taking it everywhere i'm gonna sell my petrol generator now because i really don't need it anymore thankfully so yeah it's really been it's really been good using it the past month and a half we even powered our cooler for the film crew that was here when you saw that in last week's video if you did um, which was really cool and it just powered that and overnight it came down to 60% which is pretty good and yeah it's just been good because normally in winter we really struggle and I'm kind of restricted on what jobs I can do because I can't use power tools because we only have so much power and now we've just been using this for all the power tools and we've got its own solar panels there and when you do charge with solar they charge at 500 watts and these are the PV350s that Bluetti also sent us. They're pretty good. I mean, it charges in three or four hours, I would say. I haven't timed it exactly, but they seem to be working fine. So as long as there's sun, we should be good. Yeah, it's just allowed us to keep working through the winter when we have more than two days of cloud. Um, because on the third day, normally our system struggles and sometimes we have to turn off the fridge. Uh, this time we didn't have to because we just plugged the fridge directly into this, which is awesome. So thank you very, very much, Bluetti. We absolutely love it. I tell you, for the size 
the price, I think it's about 1,100 euros, but I think you might find the coupon code in the description below, or you might find um, a special, because they're constantly having special deals on. Yeah, so for the size, for the weight, and for the price, it really does pack a punch. 2,700 watts on powerlifting mode. That's insane. I was really, really surprised that I managed to use my welder. I mean, it's about 2,000 watts, my little welder, um, but it did the job perfectly. So thank you very much, Bluetti. We absolutely love it, and it's definitely gonna be used around here. And if you have a farm where you don't have power all over the place, I definitely recommend getting this rather than a generator, because I'm telling you, it's much better. Alrighty, if you want one of these, there's a link in the description below as usual. We're gonna head on down and start drilling holes to get these posts in. Shall we, sir? Yes, let's do it. Let's see how much we can do before it starts raining, Luke. It's 150 meters, the whole ring, and we are going to start from the hardest part. <laughs> so then it can only get easier, hopefully. So I got myself, this is 40 centimeters long, and this is a 12, just to make my life easier. The finished hole would be 20 millimeters, and that's because the rebar is 16, so I'm allowing two millimeters on each side for epoxy, for the Buscha Chimica, chemical anchor. So let's see how easy this is going to be and if the Bluetti can handle this drill. No. <laughs> I have to turn it on, Dumbo. <laughs> on. AC. And then tell me how many watts it's okay. pulling. Eight hundred sixteen was the highest. Allowed. Really? Only? Uh -huh. oh, I thought it was more than that. This... No. Adding a little bit of water helps keep the drill bit a bit cooler so, and hopefully get rid of the dust. Right. There's at least 40 centimeters of soil here because I just used the, the drill and it just went straight through. So I'm going to try to bang in a post. All we need it to go in is 80 centimeters. So fingers crossed, there's a gap in the rock. Awesome. awesome. One less hole to drill. <laughs> wow. Straight in. Oh. Awesome. Awesome. Maybe, Maybe. we don't need so many epoxy. Less epoxy, less the better. Less steel as well, because there's the rebar. Right? It's of all course, expensive. You know, that 12 meters was 30 euros of the 16 mil rebar. And these fence posts 
They, I got the middle range because they have three sizes. So they have three, uh, three, four or five millimeter thick and then three centimeters or four centimeters or five centimeters oh, each piece. Yeah. So this is the 40 and they're 20 euros for six meters. So when we have three like this, because it's two meters, they come to like seven, six, 66 each. Thank you, Christine, for adding to the fund because you paid for a bit of this that we bought today. Luke is on the way. He is on the way to smash our thing. Huh? It's not going in? Already? <laughs> oh, sugar. No. Okay, so this one, the fence post will have to be, I would say this is about 40 centimeters to there. So the fence post will have to be 1.6. So 40 of it will be in the ground. Okay. So we keep the same level of ground. Did so let's this? just put in one of these for now, just so the hole doesn't fill up. Because things don't always go smoothly. This hole that Luke made is in a rock and the rock is moving but we can't get it out so Luke just went to get the jigger. <laughs> No, still 53%. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Not bad. We've been at it for a while. No. Peppa, keep walking. Keep walking, Peppa. Keep walking, Peppa. Keep walking over here. Hurrah, hurrah. Hurrah, Maggie. Oh, you have to do it.
Keep going. Keep going, Maggie. I'll show you. All right, let's go up. That's to, for tomorrow. Are you going to try and do something today? No. Tomorrow. Okay. Tomorrow. <laughs> Yesterday we had to stop working on the fencing because we hit a problem and it also started raining. But Nick came to the rescue today and he's going to help us, guide us in the right direction. Yeah, but only, only one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So pre-drill this post and then you, you're screwing into the brace bit. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, also, like this, this is going to be a corner. Yeah. Yeah. So this is going to want to tend to pull that way. So, so you, you'd be better off with a brace there and a brace, and a brace there. there to stop that happening. Yeah. And then so you have to it. weld it here and sit here. No, I'd weld them. I'll measure it. Weld them up there. And then down and see if you use this tech screw. Yeah. Tech screw to this where it is here. Just cut. Cut uh, one side of it off for about 50 mil. Okay. And then so you've got one flat piece. One flat piece. Yeah? And then you can hit that flat piece yeah. to, to match the rock, drill a hole in it, fix it down. Wow. What, like a rowboat or yeah, whatever they're called? Rowboats. It'll be fine. Wow, you know what that is like. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, well, I can show you how. You don't have to use another at all. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm going it again. <laughs> it's this one, eh? it's the whole boulder. Yeah. Well. Try and weld that in there first. See if it's my welding or. Boom, done! By the time you leave, we're going to have the fence ready, eh? It's ready put in more than we did all day. Yeah. Yeah! That wasn't hard at all. <laughs> did you know you were coming here to work, Nick? No. You so can't be into it. Is there maybe? I knew that you were coming here just to chat. Just gonna have a chat, and now look what you got me doing, slaving over a hot piece of steel. <laughs> really appreciate it if that helps. No worries. <laughs> okay, so uh, these welding masks have batteries in them, and um, they detect in milliseconds the flash of bright light that comes from the weld, and it turns the shade darker, so you can weld, uh, you can look at the weld, yeah, because if you look at if you look at the weld with open eyes, it'll burn your um, retina. Yeah, really badly. Uh, and Luke's been using this, and the batteries are flat. <laughs> I thought it was the same as this. <laughs> and if you look at this one, which is really dark, yeah, this is what he should have been using. So it would explain Luke's uh, uh, random headaches when he's been welding. Two yeah. days ago, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 
Right, so we're going to epoxy these in, yeah? These two. I'm going to show you a magic trick. Yes, please, because the nozzles, if you don't use the whole thing, they're one euro just for a nozzle. Wow. Right? And what all the nozzle does is mixes mix the, two, the together. two together. So why don't we take the nozzle off? Yeah. Right? And then we can squirt the stuff out. And just mix it. Okay, I've done that. Okay. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Like so. So you've got a hardener and the, and the resin. Make sure it's well mixed. Let's see the magic trick. And then we'll just... So that saves you getting a nozzle every time? Yeah, yeah. it's just saved a quid awesome. there. <laughs> One awesome. euro. Turn it over. That is magic. Mm -hmm. Right, that'll do that. And we'll put what's left in the hole. They're getting along again, now at least. Uh -huh. Like uh -huh. she's not, she's not uh, trying to she's attack not her. The sleeping arrangements have changed everything for them. Uh -huh, that they're sleeping separately. Eh? Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. This isn't the recommended way of doing it, of course. But no, but you have one nozzle. I mean, if you have five holes, you can use it normally. But at least, yeah. If if you need to, you can do this. Eh? This is it's fine on its own. It's just when it's mixed, it gets um, it goes hard, obviously. Yeah. 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 No, I learned that on the outdoor kitchen, eh? I had to do it like this. Yeah. And this stuff is really dangerous if you get it in your eyes. Ah, yes. Yeah. Well, I can imagine. I can imagine. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's, um, it's benzoyl peroxide, basically. That's the really bad stuff. And... Drawn in slowly in. the wrong direction as, as you know as it's bound to happen it's called sod's law isn't it <laughs> but the fence po the fencing has to be on the inside right not on the corner oh no okay because you're pulling oh okay yeah so you're better I off see. going around the outside I of the see. corner on the inside yeah ah <laughs> or else or else you have to put more fixings to keep the fencing from pulling in yeah if you go around here, the, pe the post will hold it where it is. Yeah. Yeah. On the inside, you have to tie the fence to yeah. the post. Yeah, 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 fair enough. This is why you originally came, right? Yep. I think Luke conned me. I think so too. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> he tricked me, he said we got coffee and everything. <laughs> Job, oh, yeah. Really? With yep. those? Years and years ago. Back in the day. Doing what? <laughs> steel fixing. Steel fixing, what does that entail? Reinforced steel, tying it all together. You know, you see the big cages. And oh, okay. Four, so, four like. Three in them. Okay, okay. So, building molds and stuff. Yeah. So, now you need a brace here, but obviously, we haven't yeah. got the drill bits. And so, stuff. that will go to there. So, that will so brace this back up this way. This yeah. stops it going that way. Yeah. yeah. Then you'll have a brace there to stop it going that way. So, you can pull. So now we'll have a fence okay. post there, tie it into there, and then a 1.2 going from there yeah. to there. Yeah, like that, yeah. <gasps> you, you signed that form right when you came in. Yeah, health and safety thing, waiver, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Waiver. Uh. <laughs> I'm trying to get this to lie down now so we can roll it out. Not there. No, no. no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's it. You pull it out the ground. Just temporary, mm -hmm. what are you doing? So Luke's going to yes. drill a, weld another piece of rebar in, drill it into the rock, ah. and then drill a hole through here. I yeah, see. to well, bolt that, that that'll bolted. brace that corner then. Awesome. But it looks pretty good, eh? looking good. Quick tip, if it goes downhill or something, ah. or if it is a bit slack, you can do this. Ah. Oh, that tightens it. Very good. Very cool. Okay. 
And if you find you've got like slack spots in it, you can do that in the slack spots. Yeah? Awesome. So it. when it's going downhill, you only do... So if it's going downhill, you can do it the other way. So it steps downhill. I see. Yeah, so if sometimes you'll find you've done a very good job of getting it um, on, on, a on, a on the same plane. plane yeah. But sometimes when it goes over a rock or uh, something, you might need to, to do that so you can... I see. You'll have so like, it, you it, it can be tight on the bottom and then loose on the top. So, so you, you just, do, just this. do the top ones. Yeah. I awesome. see. I see. And tighten it up eventually, yeah. I get it. Tricks. The trade, yeah. Things so difficult when you don't know what you're doing. When you don't, you don't know, know yeah, yeah for, no. sure, for sure. It's like me, I couldn't cook you. Um, oh, I can't think of anything. <laughs> 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 Crook and boost. Yeah, or, you know. No, but of course, when you don't know what you're doing no, and right. you're just uh, trying things out and seeing what works, obviously it's going to take longer. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that was amazing. Nick was here, he helped us out a crazy amount. He is a lovely, lovely guy. He also has a channel. It is amazing. It's called Project Portugal. I will put the link in the description below. So not only did he come and give us a good head start on the fencing, but he also offered to help Luke sort out the digger. So one day next week or the week after, it depends on the weather, he's gonna help us do just that. Molly, come, there's a bird here. Come. That's a bad.